Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and macOS Monterey is here and available for everybody to download and install. But wait a second, before you click that Upgrade Now button, we want to be able to make sure that we have a couple of things that we want to check and make sure that we're set on before we jump into that upgrade. I'm going to go over all those and more next. Okay, the first resource that we can use is Apple's own support document and how to upgrade a macOS Monterey, but it's a little bit sparse in what it tells you to do other than to basically back up, download, and update. But well, I wanna make sure that you're totally set before we make that jump. So the first thing we wanna do is check the compatibility to see whether your Mac is compatible with macOS Monterey or not. So we see the list here that Apple says that these machines are compatible with macOS Monterey. How do we find out which kind of a Mac we have? Well, all we need to do is go up to the Apple icon and click about this Mac. So now we can see that we are running on a MacBook Pro 16 inch 2019. So we can go down here, look at MacBook Pro and it says basically any MacBook Pro that was introduced in 2015 or later is compatible with Mac OS Monterey. So we're set on that. That's number one. The next most important thing is to make sure that you have enough free space on your Mac's hard drive before you start the upgrade. Now that might seem real simple because normally with the installer, Apple will actually check to make sure that you have enough space before the upgrade starts. But unfortunately, some of the previous installers had issues with that and did not report the free space correctly and caused a bunch of problems in the update. So why not take a really quick step to make sure that you have enough free space before we get started? So let's look at this little footnote here. It says, if upgrading from Mac OS Sierra or later, your Mac needs at least 26 gigabytes of available storage to make the upgrade. If you're upgrading from an earlier release than Sierra, then you might need up to 44 gigabytes of free space. So that's a lot of space, especially if you're running one of the Macs with the 128 gigabyte hard drive. How do we see how much space is available at our Mac? Okay, the first way is to click on the menu bar up here, click on the Apple, click on about this Mac, then click on the storage tab, and then you'll see a bar graph here that's showing you how much use space you have over here and then how much free available space you have over here. So as long as it says 26 gigabytes are larger, you should be okay. Always maybe give it an extra gigabyte or two. So maybe 28 would be good to go for the upgrade. Now, the second way we can do it is if you have on the finder, you have preferences to show your hard disk on the desktop like here. All you need to do is click on the hard drive icon like this and hit command I and open up a new window here and it says it shows your available space. It says 448 gigabytes of free space. Now that we know that our Mac is ready to go to upgrade to Mac OS Monterey, we gotta make sure all of our files are saved and backed up before we make the jump. Again, I can't tell you how many times I recommend a backing up your drive just in case of a disaster. Most of the time, the upgrade is gonna go just fine, but you don't wanna be one of those people that get caught up with a problem and then don't have their data backed up. The best way to back up your Mac is to use Time Machine, and I'll show you how to do that. I've got a Mac here that's ready to go for the upgrade, you can see here, and it's got some files in the desktop and we want to be able to back up our files. There's two ways to do it. Like I said, Time Machine is first, but you can also just back up your entire home directory and I'll show you how to do that. Let's plug in a USB flash drive or a USB hard drive to be able to back up our files to and it needs to be large enough to be able to get the entire contents of all your backup. So we'll plug that in now and you'll see it load up on the desktop here in a second. Look at this right off the bat. It says, do you want to use this disk as a backup for Time Machine? And we can utilize Time Machine to do a backup of this system. So we can basically basically click on options here and click setup or don't show me again. So if this doesn't pop up for you though, all it does is open up system preferences and then it opens up the time machine preference pane right here. And then all we need to do is select a backup disk. Click this button here and then we see our USB drive, click use disk. And that's it, it's preparing that drive to be a time machine drive. And it's saying next backup is gonna automatically kick off a backup. You can click here to show time machine in the menu bar. And then you can click on time machine up here and just say, hey, backup right now. And there it goes, it's gonna prepare the backup for the system and copy all the files from your user folder to this drive and prepare it. So when, if you need to restore, all you need to do is reinstall Mac OS Big Sur or Mac OS Monterey, and then walk through the setup assistant. And when it gets to the point where it says migration assistant, that's when you plug in your USB drive and click restore from time machine. 
Okay, and the next thing we want to talk about is app compatibility. Notice that Apple doesn't say anything about apps on here, and that's kind of a missing thing. I can't tell you how many people reached out or made a comment to say, hey, I've got a downgrade now because an absolute required application for my job or for my business or for whatever is not compatible with the latest version of Mac OS Monitor, or there's an error, or it doesn't run right, or crashes, or whatever. It, it takes time for certain third-party software companies to be able to get full compatibility compatibility with macOS Monterey. So what we need to do is visit the vendor's website to look at the requirements. So the best thing to do is type in macOS requirements and then the app name. So let's look at a couple. If we look at Adobe Creative Cloud, and that's a big one if you use this for your work at home, and you can go right to the section that talks about the operating system. You can see the recommended operating system, the lowest it can go is macOS Mojave, but it, it lists macOS Big Sur as the highest version. It doesn't say anything about Monterey. So I would make sure that Creative Cloud is fully compatible with macOS Monterey before I made the jump. So that's a very important thing. Let's look at another application. One of my favorite apps is BB Edit. And look at this. BB Edit is actually okay on everything over macOS Mojave 10.14.2. And it says it's recommended for 10.14 or 6 or later. So that's totally fine. We should be a-okay with BB Edit. So again, if you have an application that's important to you, make sure you visit the vendor's website and check the compatibility. Another thing we need to think about before installing a major upgrade is to make sure you have enough time to be able to perform the full upgrade and be able to troubleshoot if there's any small problems after the upgrade happens. What I mean by this is if you're going on a business trip and then time is gonna be short, hold off the upgrade until you get back. Or if you're at home and you're working on something and you have the time to be able to sit down, that's the perfect opportunity to perform the upgrade. Again, make sure you have enough time to perform a full backup and installation and you have enough time to troubleshoot, arrange any files or applications after the upgrade is finished. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about is to stay up to date. This is important because Apple always releases security fixes to be able to keep your operating safe. And the bottom line is, is that the newest version of macOS is always the safest version and is protected against all of the security vulnerabilities. So let's take a quick peek at that. So if you look at Apple's security page, we can see right off the bat, when we click on macOS Monterey 12.0.1, look at all these security patches that were put into Monterey. Now the problem is, is that even though Apple supports macOS Catalina and macOS Big Sur, not every single fix is backported. They do as much as they can, but the bottom line is the newest operating system is always the safest. Now what I recommend is, is that once you get to macOS Monterey, give the software update a couple days to be able to make sure that there's no issues with it and then make the jump. And I do that because some of the updates in the past have had issues and I was able to report on them pretty quickly and have someone hold off just to make sure. And sometimes Apple's even pulled down the update, but again, that's pretty rare. Most of the updates go pretty good. And that's five things you should do before upgrading to macOS Monterey. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, we truly appreciate you and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.